Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs here, and today we're going to be discussing what type of exercises you should be doing if you have a thyroid problem. We're going to be talking about how exercise benefits your thyroid, and lastly, we're going to also be talking about what to do or um, if you are over-exercising and if you're accidentally um, causing damage to your thyroid in that way. So let's jump in here. We'll talk about some of the benefits of exercising for your thyroid first. Um, before I do that, let me just say that you, I have, uh, don't forget to download my thyroid resources if you haven't already. Um, you can do that with the link um, below. There's tons of resources for you to download, which should be helpful for you. So going over uh, the benefits of exercising for your thyroid. First of all, are there benefits? Absolutely. Exercising is something you should be doing if you have thyroid problems. Um, the caveat is you need to be doing the right types of exercises at the right intensity level um, because if you're not doing enough exercise, you will get no benefit. And if you're doing too much exercise, then obviously you're going to have some problems and we'll be talking about that. Um, but one of the, I think the best and probably foremost benefit that you get from exercising is an increase in your free thyroid hormone concentration. And this also comes with a reduction um, in TSH. And so where I'm getting this information is from a study. I'll have the references below. Uh, if you go to the blog post, you can read all these references, but they come from clinical studies. And so a study, what they did is they looked at people who were exercising, they checked their TSH and their free thyroid hormone levels, and they found that people who are doing moderate intensity, this is going to be important for later, exercise, had a reduction in their TSH and an increase in their T4 and T3 levels. Now this is exactly what you want if you have a thyroid problem, because what it means is, for these people, um, is that their thyroid started to function better on its own. And that's what they, that's what was uh, meant, or that was what was seen when their TSH reduced. So it's not a bad thing or anything like that. It's actually a good thing. It means that the the thyroid, that the, the connection between the brain and the thyroid gland had improved and that the body was able to produce more free T3 and T4, which again is exactly what you want. So I would say that's first and probably most important benefit you get from exercising. The second is you get a reduction in inflammation. Now, everybody knows inflammation is bad. Probably don't need to convince you of that. Um, but it's especially bad if you have thyroid problems um, for two reasons. Uh, number one, because it limits your body's ability to take T4 and activate it to T3. And remember, T3 is the most active, most biologically active thyroid hormone in your body. You want as high of a T3 level as you can get without obviously going hyperthyroid. But if you're naturally doing this with therapy such as exercise and taking supplements, you're never going to get to that risk where, or to that point where your free T3 is excessive for your body. Okay, so don't worry about that. Um, so anyway, exercising reduces inflammation, which improves T4 to T3 conversion and improves T3 levels. But also, it can be beneficial if you have um, autoimmune conditions, such as Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And a large number of you listening to this definitely do, whether you realize it or not. Uh, so just to put that into perspective, a lot of, remember, Hashimoto's is a, uh, dysregulation of the immune system, which causes your body to attack your own thyroid gland. So if you can uh, reduce inflammation, and remember, this damage is caused by inflammation, the autoimmune component. So if you can reduce that inflammation, you might not be able to completely eliminate the damage to your thyroid gland, but you can at the very least reduce it somewhat. So that's number two. Number three is it can improve your metabolism. And this is exactly what you want if you are somebody who has thyroid problems and who is struggling with um, weight gain or who is trying to lose weight. And so what we know is that uh, the thyroid controls about 60% of your metabolism and daily caloric burn. So 60% of all that which is a huge number, right? That's a huge number. Um, but that other 40% we're going to ignore for now. But 60% of all of your uh, daily calorie burn comes from your thyroid. So if your thyroid is impaired for any reason because you have hypothyroidism, obviously if you're listening to this, your metabolism is going to be less than what it should be, which means that, let's translate that, it means you're going to be burning fewer calories per day than you should if you were in a healthy state. And this is one of the reasons that a lot of thyroid patients struggle with um, with weight gain and and they can't lose weight either no. but using exercise can help normalize your metabolism part of this is through its effects on the other things we talked about um, but it can also do this independent of those benefits so those are probably the top three exercises that you want to be doing or top three reasons you want to be exercising if you have thyroid disease now make sure you're doing it now the problem is a lot of you might be exercising some of you probably are not 
um, but some of you might not be exercising the correct way. So let's talk about some of the best exercises and the type of exercises that I recommend my patients do if they have thyroid disease. Number one, weekly strength training. Um, so strength, strength, strength training um, is ideal um, because it helps you build muscle mass. And the more muscle mass you have, the more calories you burn, um, the stronger you, you'll feel, the, the uh, stronger your bones will be, and so on. So it's a really important thing that you incorporate weekly strength training into your regimen. A lot of people tend to focus more on the uh, high-intensity interval training type of things, so bike or spin or um, sprinting or anything like that. And those can be good, um, but we'll talk about some of the potential uh, downsides of those exercises in a minute here. But don't neglect strength training. You definitely want to at least build your muscle, which will help you uh, sustain your metabolism long term and help you keep your weight off once you lose it. So don't uh, forget that uh, component. The next thing you want to consider is yoga. So believe it or not, yoga is a great uh, exercise. It may not seem like it. It just depends on what type of yoga you're doing. But yoga is beneficial because it has a stress reducing uh, effect. And also some yoga has been shown to improve your thyroid uh, thyroid function by itself as well. So don't forget yoga. You don't need to do it every single day, but definitely incorporate some yoga. There are some yoga uh, poses and stretches which also can increase blood flow to the thyroid gland, which can also improve thyroid function in that way. And there's prob We're probably not clear as to why yoga helps the way that it does, but it definitely helps. Another thing you don't want to neglect is daily walking or just simply daily moving. Um, now, while this isn't truly an, an exercise per se, it is very important for your body that you have a sustained and sort of uh, continuous uh, low-grade movement throughout the day. You don't want to be doing, you know, sitting on your butt and working in a cubicle all day and then exercise for 20 minutes and call it good. You should be continually moving throughout the day, and so that's what I mean by walking. Um, this is something that supplements the other things we're talking about here. Because it, it's not, it's not, doesn't replace it. Although in some of you, you might, the only thing you might be able to do is walking, and we'll get to that in a second. But make sure that you're staying, uh, you have some movement going throughout the entire day. The last one here that you want to consider is periodic or episodic high intensity interval training. So you probably know of HIT training. This is, these are the exercises I talked about previously, like um, spin class. Um, there's lots of ways to do it. Tabata would be another one. Um, anything that, gets your heart rate up to greater than 70% of normal uh, would be considered something that puts it into the class of high intensity interval training. Now HIT is a great uh, way to lose weight and that's why probably a lot of you are doing it, uh, but HIT should be used sparingly especially if you have thyroid problems. It's great for those people who don't have thyroid problems um, and it can be great if you do have thyroid problems, but a lot of people are over exercising and causing more harm than good by doing HIT. So I recommend you don't overdo it. Um, if you choose to do HIT, you probably only need to do it one to two times per week. If you're doing a, you know, a 45 minute to one hour HIT session every single day, and you have thyroid problems, there's a good chance that you're causing more harm than good to your thyroid. So we're going to talk about that a little bit now. Can you exercise too much? The answer is absolutely yes. Um, so the same study I linked or referenced previously. Uh, shows that this uh, effect. So once people start going beyond a 90% um, heart rate, whatever their healthy maximum is based off their age, they start to see a decline in their free T3 and total T3. And remember, I just said those are the two measurements you want to be high. So it seems that there's a exercise is beneficial as long as you're in the sweet spot, but if you don't do enough, you get no benefit. And if you do too much, then you start to get, you know, the it can start to diminish your the gains that you receive from less intense exercise and this seems to occur right around that 90 percent of healthy maximum heart rate now this we need to expand on that concept a little bit because if you have thyroid related issues then you're most of the time you're not at whatever your healthy normal is right because if you had if you were at your healthy normal that that would mean that you had normal energy levels you would be at a normal weight your metabolism would be okay etc most people who have thyroid issues they're not being treated adequately and so you can't look at this and say, oh, well, if I'm exercising less than my, less than 90% of my healthy maximum, I'm okay. Because in reality, you're probably not at 100%. You're probably at 70 or 80%. So you need to, you need to lower this down to probably closer to 60 or 70% of your healthy maximum. And for many of you, you know, that might still be kind of uh, difficult. 
So what I recommend is that you kind of just, you have, you have to be intuitive with your body. You have to pay attention to how you respond and how you react to certain exercises. So if you find that you're somebody who's exercising and you're, you're getting very fatigued after that exercise or it takes you two to three days to recover from that one single exercising event, regardless of the intensity that it's at, that's an indication that you're overdoing it for your body. And we know that once you get to that, that sort of, um, that state, you're causing more harm than good because it increases your cortisol, which can cause further reductions to your T3 and T4. And then there's a direct negative effect on the thyroid as well. So you want to get in that sweet spot without, at, while avoiding the negative effects on directly on thyroid function and also on your cortisol. So, like I said, if you are over-exercising, what you'll want to do is you want to cut down the amount that you're exercising. I generally recommend a reduction of at least 50% um, for most patients if they feel that they're into that category. And I will tell you from my experience in treating a lot of people, I find that I usually end up needing to cut back people's exercise routines, and they usually end up losing weight and feeling a lot better afterwards. It's a really kind of difficult thing to do for a lot of people because they're so conditioned to believe that more exercise means more weight loss, which is obviously better for them. But you kind of have to take a step out of that and look at what you look at your whole body, look at your thyroid, look at your other hormones. Once you start putting this into um, the larger context, you'll begin to figure out what your body actually needs. So don't be afraid of backing down in your exercise uh, a little bit as well if you think you're overdoing it. Um, but that's pretty much it for today. Uh, I know this can be a little bit of a complicated topic, um, but there, you definitely do want to be doing some exercise if you have thyroid problems. Just be sure you're not doing so little that you get no benefit and make sure you're not doing too much that you're causing a, a negative um, effect on your thyroid gland as well. And where that threshold is for you when it starts going from beneficial to, to negative kind of depends on you. It depends on um, whether you have a thyroid or not, what type of thyroid medication you're taking and how you're feeling on that thyroid. That might be a 50% normal uh, heart rate for you for some people and it might be a 90% for others so it just depends you kind of have to figure that one out on your own um, I usually do this by going one-on-one -on -one with people and helping um, figure it out in that way but if you don't have a doctor willing to work with you you may have to do it yourself so if you have any questions about this let me know leave them in the comments uh, comment section below and I'll do my best to get to those otherwise I'll see you guys in the next one